Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for turn four of my Ersatz Khan scenario. Um, now those of you who've been following will remember that more and more of the armour units, British and German, have begun to come in range and clash with one another. There have been losses on both sides. Um, the losses have been somewhat unequal in that the British have lost the AVRE and one of their Cromwells is immobilised. Um, the Germans have lost their flame units, the SDKFZ with the flamethrowers, much to the relief of the British. But this has not really helped the British take out any of the German tanks, which are still a very serious problem for them. Um, the Germans, for their part, are getting increasingly nervous about the British infantry, which is still largely intact. Um, and with four, well, five turns left to go, including this one, they are keenly aware that the British will be in a position to start rushing their units forward to try to take the objective, which is this ruined fountain here. And unless they can kill or chop up most of them before that happens, before the end of the scenario, then uh, it's going to be bad news for them. So again, the, the Germans are in a bit of a tight spot, despite their vastly superior firepower, in that they can't actually force a win in this scenario. The, the best they can hope for is to prevent the British from winning. So it's the beginning of turn four. Um, as you can see, various things are happening. The German armour is dominating the area around the objective. But the situation is a lot more fluid further up, where the British are trying to get good flanking positions uh, with their remaining armour, and the Germans are attempting to counter that. So it'll be interesting to see how the situation develops. We're halfway through the scenario and a lot could happen. So the British have the initiative and their first unit to activate is that Cromwell up there, their command tank. Now this one has quite a few choices. He could, if he wished, continue straight uh, along his route, round past this building. That would put him behind most of the German armour, but, and it's a big but, there is a panther on its way to try and stop him and the British do not want to go head-to-head -head against that thing because odds are the panther will win. Alternatively, the Brits could attempt to turn down this way. Now that would put them on the flank of Whitman's formidable tiger but their chances of penetrating his, the, the German side armour with a moving shot, I mean, it, it's not going to happen. The German's armour rating is nine and the British would be rolling with a plus two and they do not have any decent modifiers. So they, there is no way they could do any damage. They could cause problems by knocking out the Panzer too, but that would be a bit of a pointless victory, really. Um, and they're not really in a position to get at that Panzer IV, unfortunately. Um, so it's a tough one for the British. They may have to, or they could stay where they are, but then that's not a very safe option either, because if you look at where the Panzer IV is relative to them, it's in a position to pull the very move that, um, they wanted to, although, that said, they could always traverse, come this way, and try a shot at the Panzer IV side armour. Maybe that's worth trying. Yes, in fact, that approach offers the highest chance of success. So they are going to do it. So, one, two... three, four. That will also give them the benefit of some cover. The um, burning remnants of the German vehicle and that building between them and the balance of the German tank. So good move, guys. Let's just hope something actually comes of this. So they're going to roll their attack at a minus two against the Panzer IV's side armor. So 
They only get a plus two to their penetration roll. And they get a six. They get a total of eight. However, the cheers have barely died down when the Germans hit them with second chance. They're not happy with that dice roll. They want it done again. Can't bear to watch. Oh, the Brits roll a five this time, a seven. That is still a hit. Amazing. Unfortunately, they only roll a one. And that is a crew casualty. So all that it means is that the Germans cannot employ both their main gun and their machine guns at the same time. They can only shoot one or the other. So bad luck for the Brits. That was a good hit. That was a palpable hit. But unfortunately, all it did was reduce the Panzer's crew somewhat. But they do gain two suppressed tokens as well. So it's not all bad. Good start for the British. Meanwhile, the Germans, they've given their first order to the Panzer IV, which also has some interesting choices. Now, its vision is slightly obscured by the remains of the fountain, but it doesn't want to move because that would prevent it from firing, and it would really love to knock out that Cromwell, make sure of it. But then there's also the infantry hiding behind the Cromwell and the Germans really need to start thinking about whether they want to start shooting up infantry. So, so this Panzer IV is in a target-rich environment. It has a nearly helpless Cromwell over there, an immobilised one. But it's also got some nice squishy infantry units behind it. And the tough question is, does it want to try and make sure of the Cromwell by taking it out? Or does it want to leave it for the formidable tiger waiting in the wings over there? That is actually quite a tough choice. Um, I think if I were the Germans, because that Cromwell is a Mark Seven, it doesn't really have the ability to harm the Panzer IV unless it gets truly unlucky. So what the Panzer IV is going to do is it's going to come round a little and start trying to chew up those infantry units with machine gun fire. So one, two, three. Mm. Let's stop at... Hmm. Can just about see the Vickers team from where it is. So it'll stop there at three and it will open fire with its machine guns. And it's going to shoot to kill rather than suppress, because they really need to kill them off. Oof, and they roll a six. That Vickers team is caught in the open. Oh wait, no, they, they get a minus two modifier because they moved. But even so, that's a total of eight. And that poor Vickers team, caught in the open, is unfortunately massacred. That was not good. Not good at all. So, back to the British, what's happening next. Now, the British have decided they're going to go with moving a lot of their units in the north to start with. So following on from the success enjoyed by the uh, Cromwell, I think it's about time we tried to find some employment for the Staghound. I'm tempted to turn it into a little bit of a Panzer, Panzer II Hunter. But I'm going to have to be a bit careful about this because, uh, I mean, it can shoot on the move, but its attacks are not really that strong. So let's see what we can achieve by maybe... Hmm. Don't really want to create a traffic jam down here. 
Um, darn it, that's actually quite a tricky one. I think can't hurt to go... Hang on, let's put him back into view so you can all see what I'm thinking. It maybe can't hurt to move him across. So one, two, three, four five and park him in the lee of that building. I would swing him round wider but I'm still painfully aware that there is a panther lurking just over there wanting to do horrible things to us. So I will leave it at that for him. Germans in the meantime really enjoying their success here. Um, that tiger is going to have great fun trying to kill off that wounded Cromwell. And I'll be amazed if they don't succeed. They do get a minus two because they're shooting through the obstruction of that statue. But they get a plus five to their shot and it's it penetrating as well. They have a... They have the, a lot of special traits for their heavy weapon which are frankly nasty so here they here it comes so their final modifier is a plus three uh, yes is a plus three they rolled a one amazing either they didn't hit or it bounced right off either way i am not complaining i am so not complaining so that was an extremely fortunate turn for me. Now, what to do next before Lady Luck changes her mind? Oh, yes. My other tank, uh, which is now committed to this route, unfortunately. Uh, one, two, three can go crashing through that foliage on its way to come and help its mate. Uh, and this wounded Panzer IV doesn't have a lot of options at the moment. Um, it's suppressed. It probably now does it want to move or doesn't it? If it moves too far, it loses the ability to strike back at its assailant. Um, but if it stays in this area, things could get dangerous all of a sudden. And in its damaged state, it probably wants to get going. Of course, if they take a page out of the British book, sorry, a leaf out of the British book and come this way, then that tank could wreak all sorts of havoc in the British rear, including mulching a lot of my unprotected infantry, safe in the knowledge that other panzer units back here are keeping an eye on the road and the objective anyway. So what is it going to do? That is another tough question for the panzer commander. Think the temptation the temptation to fight back is a very strong one, but their role will be terrible and they can't penetrate the armour of that, uh, that Cromwell. Maybe it makes more sense to run. They could try and smash up the rest of this house as a defensive position, but that still leaves them sitting there vulnerable to further British attack. Um, so they are going to move. They're going to go one, two, three, four, just to try and get away from their attacker and give themselves some wiggle room. Not quite the brave last stand one would expect of an SS Panzer unit, but, but, um, at the end of the day, they are a command tank and their loss would... Uh, would have serious consequences. So I think they're making the right decision there. And they've actually presented the British with a bit of a difficulty because on a future turn, if the British give in to the temptation to pursue, it will involve making themselves vulnerable to the German armour that's waiting over here. So that that is not a bad move as these things go. 
right back to the British. Now the um, the Panzer IV's escape has messed these guys up too. I had sneaked my bazooka team into the building in the hope that they would be immediately adjacent to a very killable German tank, but unfortunately not. However, however, they can't hurt Wittmann's Tiger, but they can hurt um, that Panzer II and killing it might actually be quite useful. Now, of course, the retribution from Whitman's tank will be swift and terrible. I have no doubt of that. But um, maybe it's worth trading the bazooka team for the Panzer II? Hmm, I say let's do it. It's better than just sitting here doing nothing. So my bazooka team is going to go for it. So frontal armour, but we get plus three to our roll. And we get an eight that penetrates. Oh no. Uh, rolling again, we then get a one. So that is hugely unfortunate. So again, like the uh, like the Panzer IV, it can only use alternate weapons rather than both together. But at least it gets two suppressed markers. So the damage inflicted on the tank and the dazing of the crew means that at least that thing's not going to be very effective when it turn, its turn comes. So I suppose that is something. Now, moving on to the next German unit, we have this panther over here. Um, this one is very easy. There's no tough tactical choices here. They're going to get themselves round that corner. Two, three, four. They turn. And the British can thank their lucky stars that the panther is not able to fire on the move. Thank God. Uh, I say that with all the feeling I can muster, and I'll tell you why. Because as that panther rumbles round the corner, their crew catch sight of my very unfortunately placed universal carrier. <laughs> now, in a head-to-head, -head, I can think of few opponents who are more mismatched than that. And... that. Of course, they are going to give in to one bit of, the, of temptation because that's only a light vehicle. They are going to spray it with machine gun fire because they have a, a fairly even... Well, they have a one in six chance of getting through it. Um, oh, actually, two, three, four, five... Six. No, they don't. Thank goodness. The range is more than seven spaces away, so no, they won't be able to effectively draw a bead on it this turn. Probably lots of cursing on their part, and I'll tell you why. Um, because the next British activation is for that same universal carrier, and believe me, it is going to run. Because there are sometimes some enemies that you just... Do not bother fighting. Uh, let me see now. One, two, four, five, six. No, that just takes us straight into the lion's mouth. One, two, three, four. I wonder if there's anything useful we can do down here. Probably not, really, but... Hmm... The only other choice would be to sort of add to the congestion over there, but I don't think that's a really good idea. No. The important thing, as I see it, is to just get the poor fellow out of harm's way for this turn, and I'll worry about what happens later. So one, three, four. Won't use his full movement, and I'll stop there. 
next to the comforting presence of the uh, Cromwell. <laughs> so, back to the Germans. Oh, wait, hang on. No, I lie. Sorry, he should not have moved. It was not him that had the next go. After all that, my mea culpa, it was actually my damaged Cromwell. Now there is precious little this poor fellow can do. However, his turret is intact and it's tempting to lob a shell towards the stern of that Panzer IV because if he gets lucky, if he gets lucky, he might be able to hit it on its flank armour and then he'd have to roll really well to do some damage but it's better than just sitting there. So the British are going to open fire from their damage tank. Ooh, and they get a six. The shot is exactly on target. That's not actually brilliant news because I was rather hoping it would drift to the stern of the tank rather than stay on the side, but never mind, we'll settle for hitting its side armour. So the British need to roll a six to get a penetrating hit. And they fail. That was a five. That would have been good. But unfortunately, quite literally, no dice. Probably rattled the crew of the German tank, but there's rattled and then there's knocked out, and the British would have preferred knocked out. No matter. So, up to the Panzer V. Ah, sorry, I lied. The pa <laughs> Panzer V. What am I talking about? The Panzer II. So they're in a bit of a state. Their main weapons uh, uh, is still usable, um, but they're a bit dazed um, and there's not actually anywhere safe for them to go because if they go down this road, they'll be putting themselves at the mercy of that Cromwell. And while a couple of the German tanks in this game outclass the British ones, a Panzer II against a Cromwell is going to be rather one-sided. Um, moving down here doesn't really gain him anything. And, um, no, it's not, it's not a terrible load of good choices, really. The crew are dazed, so any fire they bring to bear on the bazooka team that just hit them is not going to achieve very much at all. Um... No, it's not. None of their options are good. The only thing I can think of that might be worth them doing is either holding their positions and waiting for things to clear up a little or trying to move somewhere to safety. But if they try and move to safety, they run the risk of getting in the way of their fellows. So perhaps leaving them there as a threat in being uh, there is there is no real point them shooting anything because they um, they can't really. Uh, I suppose they could try to go for a suppression. Um, actually, yes, why not? May as well may as well go for a bit of defiance. They're going to try and suppress the British bazooka unit. They get a total of seven. Uh, which does match the British defence rating, so the bazooka team does get a suppressed token. So they can, they can derive some satisfaction from having forced the Brits to keep their heads down. Now thanks to my earlier error with the turn order, I know exactly what that universal carrier is going to do. He is going to scuttle to safety down here because there are simply some things in this universe that universal carriers were never designed to face, panthers being one of them. So he's much better off down there. 
So the final activation, because the Germans have expended all their regular ones, is uh, Wittmann with his ability to act autonomously. Uh, now he also has choices. He can either try and get rid of that troublesome that troublesome Cromwell, which has just demonstrated that it's still annoyingly very much alive. He can try and clear away the infantry in that building. Or he could manoeuvre to try and put the frighteners on my Cromwell. All of these are tempting options. And in some cases, he could do more than one. So, for example, he could bring his main weapon to bear on the Cromwell down there while shooting up the infantry with the bazooka with his machine gun. Or perhaps going a bit for a bit of both. We'll see. I think at the moment, presently, in terms of what they can see, the gravest threat is the infantry unit. So, and also the Germans do have another Tiger down there that could potentially take care of the Cromwell, even though it failed to do so this turn. So if I were Wittmann, I think I would try and get rid of that bazooka team. The other benefit is it eliminates the closest British infantry unit to the objective. Um, so in a sense, the Germans are doing what they're supposed to be doing. So he is going to start with his main gun. The building is already demolished, so he's just going to go for trying to kill the infantry hiding within it. The Germans get a four for a total of seven. Um, that is a hit, unfortunately, for the British. And it does mean that the bazooka team is wiped out. That was unfortunate. So we have lost some of our precious anti-tank capability. The only consolation prize is that Wittmann cannot really see any infantry targets that he can use his machine guns on. So at least there's a wasted opportunity there for him. But it's another terrifying demonstration of how scary a well-handled um, uh, tiger can be. Uh, so there we go. Now on the British side talking of people who are able to act autonomously. I think it is time Lord Lovett legged it because he is in serious danger of having a nasty surprise when that Panzer IV comes round the corner. So he is going to go one, two, and tuck himself round the corner next to that universal carrier. That should buy him at least another turn of being out of sight of that big, scary and at least damaged and partially blinded German tank. And so that is it for the activations this turn. So now we just get our um, supply phase. Now movement in the supply phase, I'm still loath to commit my infantry to the objective right away. But I am going to get them inside this dratted house. So one, two, going to pack them in here for now. Oh yes, I should have given Lovett an activation token. Uh, I really don't know what to do with this universal carrier other than say it needs to run. I think what I'll do is have it park itself behind the blazing remains of that Cromwell just, just to buy it a turn where that German tank can't see it. And over here, where I have this huge mass of infantry, uh, I'm going to have to start keeping people safe. So... Despite the immense risks involved, I'm going to have the fire teams shuffle up so that I can at least get my officers to safety in this building. Um, and you, you chaps are just going to have to run, really. 
um, one, two, three. Uh, one. I really don't know what to do. I need to get them out of the way of my tank so that hopefully next turn the tank can actually try to intervene and do something. So I'll shuffle them back there. It's probably going to mean a massacre depending on what the Germans do next turn, but they've caught me on the hop there. I should have seen this coming. Uh, and I think I let these guys loiter around the building far too long, but there we go. My mistake. I just hope it doesn't cost me too dearly in this scenario. As for the Germans, uh, they're going to keep the wounded Major Gruber where he is because after having seen him clipped, they've realised it's still a bit of a dangerous environment out there. But the men who are lugging forward their gun are going to continue doggedly pushing it forward in the hopes that they may actually get a chance to do something in this scenario. Uh, and so that is it. The British didn't expend any of their cards. Um, I am going to discard all terrain because it really hasn't helped me so far this game. And I've drawn return to sender. Well, that's a fat lot of good. None of the German units other than... Well, no, no, the Germans haven't brought any grenades to the party. And the Germans are owed a card as well. Oh, they are going to play Courage at this point, because now seems a good time to do it. And they're going to play it to remove a suppression marker from their more valuable Panzer IV. So they would have done that before the draw step, so... They can draw another card on top of that to bring their hand up to four. And all that remains to be done is all units with suppression markers lose one of them. So that Panzer IV, terrifyingly, the one that's about to break into our rear, their crew has fully recovered. Really don't like the look of this. And that... is the conclusion of turn four. So there's been more fighting and more losses, although nothing, nothing decisive as yet. But the Germans have killed off some of the British infantry and they've deprived them of the services of their bazooka team, which is a fairly serious loss. Uh, that, that is really going to hurt. And so we're just going to have to see uh, how things go from there. Uh, the British, for their part, have satisfyingly damaged two German tanks, but both of them are still in the field and still represent a danger. So the odds are still generally against the Brits, but the game still could go in the, in the favour of the British. If I can keep enough of my infantry alive and not allow the Germans to massacre or drive them away, I might still have a shot at this, but there's four more turns to go and we will see. Um, so I'm going to leave that one there, guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching your way through this one with me. As always, massive, massive hello and appreciation to my regulars. Thank you so much for joining me on the channel. It's always a pleasure to see you fellows. Um, thank you very much for your company. And um, to anyone who's visiting for the first time, uh, if this is the first of my videos you've seen, a very warm welcome to you. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was interesting. If you're here for Heroes of Normandy, please check out the other content that I've put on this channel. And if anything else catches your fancy um, among the, the various games I've looked at, um, please do have a look at those too. Um, in any case, you are very, very welcome. And to all of you who've tuned in, thank you very much. I will see you very soon for turn five. Take care and thanks. Bye.